Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. And today I'm very excited to check out Log Jam from uh, uh, Rain Tree Puzzle Games. This is for two plus players, ages seven plus. It'll take you, I don't know, about five minutes to play. And in Log Jam, you're going to start off with this big, hefty, wooden looking log piece. It'll look something like this. And then your goal is to try to take out these little tiny circles and put them into half of the log. And hopefully, those little tiny circles will not poke out of the log. Because if they poke out of the log, then you get points. And points are bad in this weird abstract game it's weird it's really simple but is it good let's open it up and i'll tell you what i think all righty then we're gonna take a look at what you're gonna get inside of log jam so first and foremost we're gonna handy dandy rule sheet which is very very tiny this is all you're gonna need right here uh no pictures no muss no fuss it's pretty well done should have you up and running in no time at all it's also a really simple game so i can teach you how to play right now so in log jam the game is going to start like this it'll all be one big compact block you're going to take this part off and then you're going to start dropping these pieces down into here so there's a whole bunch of these wooden pieces in here and they have varying different lengths the goal of the game is to have the fewest points at the end of the game if you have the fewest points at the end of the game you will win the game so how does the game work well, I'll go ahead and show you. So you're going to go around the table, and on your turn, you are going to take one of the protruding logs out of here and put them in here. If it pokes out of here, even by just a little teeny bit, you get a point. So you're trying to grab the shortest ones to put them in there. So, for instance, on my first turn, I might go right there, and that's a bummer for me. That's a point for me. And you have to keep track of it with a pen and a paper. So now the next guy would go, he'd drop that one right there, and then this guy would go, and he'd get this one right here, and then this guy would go, and he'd get this one right here. And I was the only point, person who got a point at that uh, point, which is a bummer. So now we get to this point where nothing is protruding. So the next player is actually going to get a really lucky turn because all he has to do is take this off and put it onto there. And that's his entire turn. So when you get to do that, it's lucky for you. So now the next person eh, might go here. And oh, it's poking out. I thought for sure that'd be good. So that person would get a point. This guy might go right here. He's money. This one person would go right here. That's a point right there. So you get it how the game works. You're going to continue to do this, bringing that over there and going like this and like that, uh, until eventually you get to these white logs down here, these lighter colored logs. When you get down to the lighter colored logs, you're no longer going to be putting them uh, on top. You're actually going to put them off to the side, so it gets a little bit more difficult. But anywho, you're going to continue to do this until you can no longer grab any of the pieces. Whoops, put it over there. You can no until you can no longer grab any of the pieces from the inside of this. So boom, 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 game over. Whoever has the fewest number of points will be the winner of the game. That, in a nutshell, is how you're going to play Log Jam. All right, then, Log Jam from Braintree Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go for the pros, let's go for the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. Obviously, uh, this is an abstract strategy game. It is a very light abstract strategy game where all you're going to do is take pieces out and put pieces in, and hopefully those pieces don't pop out. And that literally is the entire game. That one sentence I just told you is all you're getting in this game. So, despite the fact on the box it says a game of skill and chance, there's no skill in this game. The only skill is being like, hmm, I think I remember that this one has nothing in there, so maybe my stuff will pop out. This is a memory game, pure and simple, and if you're not into memory games, this one's not going to be for you. That is the only mechanism really in this game, is memory games. Another comment I have in this game that says two or more players, but realistically, you're not going to want to go over about four players because there's there's only, I think, 21 different logs that you're going to be doing. So once you start getting to five players, you're only going to be grabbing four logs apiece. And once you get to six players, you're only going to be driving three logs apiece, pretty much. And seven players, you only get three logs apiece. So I found two to three, maybe four players was the sweet spot with this game. Honestly, I think it's about really a two to three player game. You can play as teams... But, I don't want to do that. Any other cons I have of the game? I mean, you have to know it's incredibly light. It's incredibly simple. There's no real strategy whatsoever. But if you know that, I was really surprised that Log Jam went over really well with my kids. And it's not a terrible game. I'm not going to say it's a great game. And a good game, I'm even hesitant to say that. I'm going to say it's an okay, too good game. 
And the best thing I can say about this game is that it does not outstay its welcome. Too many games that are in that okay to good range outstay their welcome. And once you outstay your welcome and you don't have enough gameplay to outstay your welcome, the game gets boring and it gets stagnant. This game does not do that because the game is over just like that. And it's got that sort of let's do it again thing. It's like a flip it over. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. And the kids in my class really enjoyed this game. So that's, that's kind of what you need to know. So where would I put this game? It is firmly in the gateway game category for people who don't play games at all because there's nothing scary at all. It's easy to learn. It's easy to teach, which is a good thing. Uh, oh, we're moving on to the pros. That's right. Uh, I put it in the family weight category because, like I said, it says age is 6 plus, and I think you could easily teach this to a 4-year-old or a 5-year-old. It is that simple. I think the only reason it's 6 is for choking hazards. So family game, children's game, maybe gateway game if they've played no other games whatsoever, but there's still other gateway games that would rather play. And that being said, even in those categories, I still would rather play other things other than this game. So in the end, Log Jam is okay to good. There's a reason why you probably have not heard of this game, and that's because it doesn't do anything spectacular. It looks cool, and you know, if I had like a, my own desk or something like that, I might keep this on my desk. I feel like it's a nice little, uh, like a centerpiece or something like that. Not a centerpiece, the kind of thing you'd have a, like a coffee table game. Maybe you could even have the rules just tucked right up here. Yeah, that would actually work pretty good. Uh, you know, kind of like the, the things you play at Cracker Barrel, where it's just like the pegs and the wooden things. This is like that, but to the next level. So, and this is a game, and it's enjoyable. So in the end, Log Jam. You find it at a thrift shop or something like that, and you actually have a place to put this where you might play it, yeah, I'd say it's worth 50 cents, a buck, maybe two bucks. I wouldn't go anything higher than that. It's an okay to good game. It's an okay to good children slash family game, but other than that, steer clear. So that is Log Jam from Range Tree Games. It looks like it might be your cup of tea. Be sure to check that one out. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know who's your favorite superhero villain Ooh, that's a tough one my favorite superhero villain oh man there's so many of them i i i'm a big spider-man guy you know I, I used to read spider-man comics when i was a kid but then with the mcu and the dcu to a lesser extent i really got into all those other characters so i still gotta go with spider-man no, no, no. I'm going to go with X-Men. I really like Mystique. I think Mystique's special ability to be able to copy anybody else and look like them. I think that is just such a cool special ability. Oh, Magneto's awesome, though, as well. I really like... Ugh, it's hard. You know what? I'm going to go with the Hobgoblin. I'm going with the Hobgoblin because I like him better than the Green Goblin. And he's orange, which is one of my favorite colors. Pretty crappy reasons. Learn with the comments below. Who's your favorite bad guy? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.